on any real field of battle. of mobility, firepower, and shock action apply to the strategy of battle as we have known them in the past. But along with the advances in technology and improvements in vehicles and weapons has come the awesome specter of a new kind of battlefield. This cloud of deadly dust seen from a distance signifies an end to the concept of warfare known for centuries. It ushers in the age of the atom and hydrogen bombs, when the exploding of one projectile can cause inconceivable destruction. The tank has been tested under nuclear conditions and has passed the test. Its usefulness has not been limited, but extended. Under such conditions, its serviceability remains unimpaired. It maintains its capability of counteracting any enemy ground attack. In fact, a tank may well be one of the safer places to be in the event of an atom or hydrogen bomb explosion. The advent of the nuclear age has the three basic requirements of armor important as never before. It calls for increased alertness and the ability not only to withstand but to employ nuclear power. How will armor meet the demands of the future? The answer is supplied by Lieutenant General Arthur G. Trudeau, Chief of Research and Development, Department of the Army. The answer lies in this fact. The fantasies of today will be the realities of tomorrow. You've just seen the tremendous strides made by the development of armor forces over the past decades. It's indeed an impressive record, but to rest upon laurels is not only insufficient, but dangerous. The tank of World War II was an achievement in those times. Today, it's just a museum piece. And with the explosion that's taking place in science and technology, the pace of everything we do is rapidly increasing today. Our newest main battle tank is the M60. It's capable of defeating all armored vehicles known to exist today. The combat weight's 50 tons, which is 3,000 pounds less than the former model, due to the extensive use of aluminum. At the same time, this has resulted in better armor protection for the crew. The tank has a completely new 750 horsepower diesel engine, capable of operating for 300 miles without refueling. Its tracks are 28 inches wide to give it better mobility. It can climb 60% grades and three foot vertical obstacles. Can forge streams of four feet in depth without prior preparation. Can average 15 miles per hour cross country and 32 miles per hour on the road. The M60 is armed with a 105 millimeter gun with a much more effective fire control system. A 7.62 millimeter machine gun and a 50 caliber machine gun 
which give it a capability of delivering tremendous firepower against a wide variety of targets. The M60 tank is Armour's 1961 model. As I've stated, it is without doubt the best tank of any army in the world. But in these times of peril, it is wisest to act in the present and think of the future. There's nothing permanent in technology. The Christie tank has become a part of armored history. Soon the M60 will be history. Already, Army Research and Development is engaged in meeting the future demand for improved armored weapons. With our awareness of today's fantasies becoming tomorrow's realities, the vista of the world hold unlimited promise. New developments are underway to give armor much more speed, mobility, firepower, and although the conception seems at the moment in the realm of science fiction, who could say that someday the flying tank or the flying saucer would not be a reality? Past, present, or future, in the realm of nuclear or non-nuclear combat, the role of armor is and will continue to be a vital one. Proudly it wears its mantle, the combat arm of decision. The big picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.